Beyond the count of acres protected and riverfront preserved, many of us have also been paid in the currency of time spent exploring the river and the wild lands of its watershed, and have known moments when the small dramas and extraordinary intricacies of biodiversity have been revealed. Salmon run the duck trap seeking their spawning gravels, par swim in the basin dug to make the red, a kingfisher dives for its dinner, and ravens soar above the forest that stand tall, protected under the salmon umbrella. In 2002, an extraordinary book was published called To Save a River, a collection of stunning photographs and essays about the natural history, restoration, and preservation of a little-known river in mid-coast Maine, the Duck Trap. Scott Dickerson, the director of the Coastal Mountains Land Trust, wrote the text. We're on the shores of Knight's Pond, which is one of the headwater ponds in the Duck Trap watershed. It's the receiving body for the very first tributaries that are headed towards the river and ultimately towards the ocean. From Knight's Pond, the Duck Trap meanders nine miles through Belmont, Northport, and Lincolnville until it empties into Duck Trap Harbor in Lincolnville Beach. In 1995, a group of people came together to explore ways to protect the river and its watershed. Conservation of the Duck Trap watershed was somewhat of an opportunistic concept that arose on the part of several organizations and individuals at the right time. Um, the Nature Conservancy already had some conservation land in the watershed. Coastal Mountains Land Trust was involved in some conservation land acquisitions in the watershed. Um, Tanglewood 4-H Camp and Learning Center had a long history of running a, uh, an environmental education program there. This was really an opportunity to work together and, and achieve some pretty substantial conservation goals in a single watershed which is very unusual in mid-coast Maine because there's been such a long history of, of use of the landscape and development of the landscape in this region. The coalition took on a far-reaching goal to protect 100% of the land along the river, the riparian zone, and as much of the larger watershed as possible. A wildly ambitious and possibly even ridiculous goal. People who live in the watershed communities always knew it was a special place, but the plight of the endangered Atlantic salmon, who still spawn in the river, brought home just how unique the duck trap was. Salmon are, they're what's called the nadromous fish, so they spend part of their life in fresh water and part in salt water. And adults will come into the river at, through, from June through October, and they'll, they'll hold in pools like this in areas where it's cool and dark and um, well oxygenated. And then in October and November, they'll start moving upstream and they'll spawn. Then they'll stay in the river for two years. And the spring after their second full summer, they head out to the sea as smolts and they'll spend one to three years in the ocean. Generally, it's about two. And uh, then they'll return back and do it all over again. There are eight federally listed rivers in Maine where Atlantic salmon spawn, all larger than the duck trap. So what makes this stream so special? The salmon that return to the duck trap are completely natural. Most of our other rivers in Maine, we stock. This river has continued to hang on. The fish here and there continue to come back to this river. So it's, it's our gauge for what a natural unstocked river would do, which is tremendously important. We didn't really know what the significance of that population of salmon was. It didn't have any um, uh, formal regulatory um, status under the Endangered Species Act or, or any other uh, real status in that sense. But that changed in 2000 when the Atlantic salmon was listed as an endangered species. The salmon raised the stakes on the conservation efforts of the Duck Trap Coalition. Atlantic salmon are one of those charismatic megafauna that people rally around. It's it's one of it's it's something that that brings people together and, and interests people. However, what it's really about is having a functioning ecosystem and and having uh, the community really get behind having that and working together and working with the state agencies and the federal agencies and and it's really this model of collaboration that has made the efforts of the coalition so successful. There's about 5,510 acres of conservation in the duck trap watershed at this moment and growing. 
With more than 83% of the watershed land conserved, the coalition is well on its way to achieving its ambitious goals. 83% of the riparian land is in conservation, and 40, 43, I think, percent of the tributaries, the land around the tributaries, the major ones, is also in, in permanent protection. So what that leaves is a huge area in which to promote the education and outreach and to actually use it to widen people's understanding of particular, you know, not just, let's say, the duck trap for the wild Atlantic salmon, but a whole host of other environmental education opportunities. On a cold day in mid-February, Peter Steenstra, a biologist from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, brought 200 salmon eggs to the Lincolnville Elementary School. The fifth grade students will tend the eggs until they're ready to be released into the Sheepscot River in the spring. They're lying on their sides, just as they would in the wild. Okay. It's cool to watch them hatch, too. It's been an amazing experience. It's kind of like when you just have a kid, kind of. Like you see their first steps, and instead it's like their first swims. So. Yeah. The Duck Trap Coalition's success is not just measured in acres conserved. It's about the blend of land protection, education, recreation, and community building, all centered around a river and the land that feeds it. A lot of people, when you talk about some of the other rivers, they're like, where, where, what? But you come down here and you mention the Duck Trap, and people know what you're talking about. This is such a unique place, and it's such a wonderful and beautiful place. So it's finding something that people really, really care about and are passionate about. Salmon run the duck trap seeking their spawning gravels. These moments tell us how important preserving ecological integrity is to every life, to all of our lives. So this is your task. Join with others who are committed to protecting natural rivers and their watersheds and create a conservation umbrella for your own duck trap. Your accomplishments will live beyond your moment on Earth and become a legacy for the generations of all life that will succeed you.